I square off life into boxes. I file away the chapters. I cut the memories with bookmarks. This is my childhood, my first pet, first day of school, time I cried, time I wish I did, time gone now. And these boxes remain. Four walls, capped with shingle hats, tracing a path from little to big me. I think for most of us, it's a one-way path. These homes not revisited, moments buried in photo albums and address books, but I want to see them all. These boxes that held my life, these changes. I want to see them one more time. I'm officially blind. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm nervous, and I just have to film you. What are we doing? We're going to all of your houses that you used to live in. Do you remember why we're doing this? I feel like we talked about it once. Do you remember when we went to my old house and just randomly touched it? Oh yeah, and then we were like, oh, we should do this to all your houses. Yeah. So now we are. That was like 10 years ago. That's crazy. <laughs> Here we are, house one. I'm very nervous, there's the gate. At least it's open for us. Mm -hmm. um, all this crazy. My dad built this house that we're about to go see. <laughs> so this one is weird. It kind of counts, it kind of doesn't. I don't remember this house at all. We moved uh, shortly after I was born. Brief editor's note, we did knock on doors and let people know what we were doing. We weren't just canvassing their houses or anything. We didn't go into any of the houses and I didn't ask to. I think there's something valuable in keeping those memories as they were and not what they are now. Still did technically live here. My dad did build it, so it felt important to at least see one more time. There it is. Do you feel like you missed out on anything by being in the same place or do you feel like you had a benefit in that regard? I think I had a benefit. I was really friggin' lucky and eight of my best friends lived in the same neighborhood. I just have such a tie to like the beach near my house, the forests, like it feels like my family because I grew up with it. But I think it would have been cool to move around. I feel like I got that in my later years when I lived random places. I don't know though, it's hard to compare when you haven't had the other option. Do you, are you glad you moved around a lot? It's weird because I think what we're both talking about is I think we both have gratitude for the experience we had. Mm -hmm. But I think that's because we're grateful people. Mm -hmm. And if I had stayed in one spot, I'd be grateful but I also am a person that has now gratitude for moving around as much as we did. Cause like, it was hard, like uprooting your friends and stuff every few years, but I find I'm very adaptable now. Mm -hmm. Well, chameleon of sorts. Mm -hmm. We take those. <laughs> it's easy to say you, you want it to have been differently, but it is how it is. And so you can't change it. So why not be grateful? So this house is literally five minutes away from the last one. And this one's like a lot more special because like I actually have concrete memories. This is where I first like went to kindergarten. I remember my first lightning storm was in this house and I was terrified and there's this big window out front. You can really see out into the valley from this house. And I remember thinking the world felt like so big. So cute, Brad. I love your little childhood stories. <laughs> Thanks, mom.
When I think of my childhood, it's not really separated into chapters. It's kind of just like one big childhood. Probably when I'm like five or six. It's like me being a little free bird, running around in a little polka dot bikini. Just like loving life with Grace and my parents and at the beach, always at the beach. Freedom, I feel like authentic, authentic, a free bird. Authentically a free little bird, mm -hmm. little Sarah. Yeah. I loved her. I still, like, I love thinking back to that version of myself. The other guy I need to showcase in GR2 so people know that there's a little dog running around. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think chapters. You know, I was born in Mexico City. For me, I think the most impactful journey I've had was um, with skating. When did you start skating? There was three. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when I met Yoshi, he was like, some of this stuff isn't right. Now reflecting back and thinking a lot, I think it's mentally healthy to also be able to say, hey, I'm going to not be here today. But again, that took me years to realize. Just not getting yelled at for making mistakes is also really nice. When I met my friends, this is the kind of people I was looking for. And then I went back to skating and my friends came and I don't know, it's been a really, probably the happiest month I've ever had. Like recently? Yeah, I've had like the best time. I felt like I was like this mm -hmm. in that world. And then when it's all of a sudden, it's yeah. there's so much more out there than what I know. Is it recording yet? A little bit. Oh. <laughs> I, I kind of remember it in chunks. I was like five when I moved to Canada. I didn't even really know what Canada was. You know, sort of kind of making my new life here. It was like, I'm glad that that happened. 13, 14 is when my parents divorced. Like my dad moved out and it was just me and my mom for the longest time, kind of all through high school, through my college days I was living with her. Say that sort of like, taught me to take care of her a bit more, take care of myself a lot more too. I spent a lot of time sort of like on my own at home and, um, Kind of becoming more self-sufficient maybe more of like a caring person towards my mom towards others as well but i'd say i look back on it and i'm like happy with who i became kind of through that and the person that i am today there was a lot of growing up to be done in that time i would say so Okay, so this is a weird childhood lore part. My dad <laughs> used to run a summer camp in Hope, British Columbia. I used to live on the camp, and so we're at, at the camp right now. On the camp property, um, I also went to school. They had a little school building here. That was a school little run. run. And can you tell where it is? Right there? It's right there, <laughs> yeah. my old classroom in here. Small town vibes. I was the only kid in the first grade. It was really uh, unique. So what's crazy about this situation is like, this is the horse corral, this is where they live. And for some reason, there's horses over here, just open rain. <laughs> like that's the road, y'all don't belong there. I just came here to look at houses, but now I think I'm the horse whisperer. <laughs> Your hand just extended and all the horses come to you. In addition to living here, this campground was also a really big aspect of sort of our church culture. We have a lot of like youth retreats here. A lot of my friends taught summer camp here and were employed here, like Sarah. <laughs> so there's a lot of memories beyond living here. We kind of left under weird circumstances. Um, probably that I might talk on at a future point. A lot of mixed feelings here, but mostly good memories. It was a good sort of first taste of what community could be. And I'm really grateful for this chapter. Ooh. Hi. 
Hello. Okay, welcome back. New day, new sleigh. Different day, but we're gonna finish. We're gonna we're on our way. Wow, that was a poem. Thank you. <laughs> This was a really big change, uh, going from little tiny town Hope to here. We weren't here super long, but this is kind of where I got introduced to so many new aspects um, of my life. Um, this is where I met Sarah. I don't remember Brad living at this house, but no. I remember the next two. But I lived here when I met you. Yeah. Yeah. Aw. Aw. You were so cute. Brad was literally the cutest little baby boy. Was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's really nice about this house is very hard to miss because the, the very long, very windy driveway. A uh, little known fact, these signs, they mean that you're going to have a good time. I'm scared. <laughs> this is actually the house that started all. This is the one we touched when we were way back when. We're actually, we're just going to leave because actually it's a little scary. And also we were evicted from this one. <laughs> So yeah. No trespassing signs. Yeah, the no trespassing signs too. We're just gonna we're gonna play it real cool and go to our next house, which is actually just up the road. Okay, so this is the house that I have lived in for the longest. It's the house that means the most to me, and I think especially here I found out what I wanted and the things I was passionate about. I wouldn't say I got those things, but I think I learned what to chase and what things I prioritize. My folks actually still live here, so this is this is still, in a way, a home for me. It feels like this breeding ground of everything that I wanted to be and everything that I am now. Slay. In 2020, I came to visit you in Toronto and I asked you some questions about what home meant to you. And you said home was these places that you were visiting and exploring and making new memories in. But I have a different question for you. When or where do you feel most at home? There's something about being on my own in nature. Like I feel the most present when I'm by myself, I think and being present for me feels like I'm just at home in my body. But I felt that feeling everywhere. It's kind of just like my own brain can be my home, like my safest place. And I'm just like at home wherever I am as long as I'm present and loving life, which is exciting. Like you don't feel bound to something. You know that you can feel settled wherever you are. That's, that's home to me. Thank you. When Sarah asked me four years ago where home was, I said these videos. Because even if I move, I can take home with me the people and memories written on my hard drive. But in a different way, keeping this documentary going has moved me. I watch the early entries and I see, you know, sure, a younger me, but an unchanged me. It's hard to see where you're going until you get there. It helps to have people along the way who can reflect and point out that change. I feel like you've come into your own. You're more confident in yourself and your space and what you want to do. Your values and your perceptions about the world are deeper rooted in reality than they used to be. I think you know who you are as a person more now. Like, you know what you like, what you need to grow. You've pursued that in a way that is admirable. I'm proud of you. Home is a garden of people, somewhere I can put my roots, but also uplift others too, 
So long as I stick with these people who grow, reflect, and help me to do the same, I think I'll always be home. <laughs>